For the past 12 years, Benjamin Netanyahu has been the Prime Minister of Israel, but is that time about to expire? We're going to get into all the details of it and I believe some prophetic significance that this has as well. But off the top, guys, let me mention I'm now on Rumble. Have you subscribed there to me yet? If not, what are you waiting for? The link is down below. Go ahead and check me out there because this is, you know, I could be kicked off YouTube at any point. Don't wait for that to happen. Get on over there to Rumble. Check out the content we're putting there. Also, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. Well, it has been years now at this point of the back and forth elections. Netanyahu failing to form a government, his then rival Benny Gantz unable to form a government. And so we've had over four elections now at this point that have taken place. So in the middle of this, you also have Israel and Hamas and the whole deal there and the rockets going back and forth with everybody. I mean, this whole thing has been absolutely crazy that we've had to be dealing with here. So where do we go? Here's where it stands right now. A unity government. That's right. A unity government has agreed to come together. Now, this was done at the very last second because what all of these, you know, separate parties have in common is that they all want Netanyahu gone from power. They don't want to deal with him at all. So you have those that are on the left, those that are in the center right parties and those that are on the far right parties all coming together to collectively tell Israeli President Reuben Rivlin that We've come to an agreement in the final hours. So here representing the more center left side, you have Yair Lapid, and then more on the center right, you have Naftali Bennett. Now, according to the deal that has been reached here, Bennett would serve as Israel's prime minister for the first two years before handing power then over to Lapid, who would then take over as prime minister after that. Again, they're going to have to govern together. Again, you're mixing all these different political groups together as to one, which would make it very hard for either side to push more of their extreme sides of their agenda forward when you have this coalition that's taking place. Now, they're still going to need the votes in parliament to go ahead and get this to become official. Netanyahu, he has a small chance still to try and put something together, but Time is running out. I got more to say on this, guys, in just a second. I'm going to break this down a little bit more. Before I do, if God lays it on your heart to help donate here to our ministry, we would so much appreciate that. You know, we're demonetized here on YouTube. They're not going to support Christian conservative content creators. It's not going to happen. But you guys, if you enjoy what I do and you could spare a couple bucks a month, it would really go a long way. The links are down below. You could even sign up on Patreon for as little as just five bucks a month. When you do, you get my exclusive podcast. I talk more about sensitive information there. We also include the links to these YouTube videos up there because you're not going to get alerted every time a new video comes out. Plus there you can comment on these same videos, but you can do it censorship free because YouTube is blocking and they are hiding so many of the comments that you guys write now. So Patreon is definitely a great way to go if you're able to help us out. We really appreciate that. God bless you all for that. Getting back in here though to Netanyahu, you know, like I said, he's got a small amount of time to get this going, to get things to change, to get people to come basically leave this unity government, come back over with him. This could, of course, you know, lead to another election. I mean, nobody in Israel wants that. But it is possible that it could happen. Now, where does this whole prophetic significance come in? The way I see it is this. These, this unity government that's coming together, they, they've agreed to these terms. If this holds, and I, I believe that it will, barely, but I believe that it will, I think at that point you are going to see an agreement in place for a two-state solution between Israel and Palestine. Now, the Bible clearly says, do not divide the land. Do not part the land of Israel. That is the land that God gave to the Jews. But we know this is prophesied to happen anyway. We know it's going to happen. So this was more unlikely to happen with Netanyahu serving as prime minister you know, he fought against this for so long. But with this new unity government, if they do in fact take power, like I think they will and like I think many others will as well, well, then you could have this two-state solution formed officially. They might want to break, you know, break up the tension with Hamas and everything and try to appease the Palestinians saying, look, we can achieve peace because even Lapid was even talking about here how we want to appeal to 
all those who are Israelis and those who are not. We want peace within our region. When you hear that, you know, the Bible says, when I say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. I think this unity government would absolutely form a two-state solution between them and Palestine, effectively dividing the land of Israel, going against God's word, and then you are going to usher in what I believe will be the soon arrival of the Antichrist there in the region. That whole area is so volatile right now. Everything that's happening, again, the, the ceasefire that, that's happening now, we know this won't last. It's just, it never will. So, Bible prophecy unfolding now very quickly. You get Netanyahu out of the way in Israel. You get Trump out of the way in the United States. And you see what happens. You have all the players now on the field to where they can start to really push forward with this last day's agenda. We can't stop prophecy from unfolding. We don't even need to be afraid of it because if you're born again, if you're saved, if you're a Christian, you don't got nothing to worry about. God has got us covered. He is going to keep us from the hour of testing. We will be worthy to escape those things which are coming upon the earth. The seven-year tribulation where the Antichrist will rule and reign with an iron fist. He will declare war against the saints of God. We know he's going to eventually step into that third temple. And trust me, this unity government could go ahead forward with that as well. They rebuild that third temple. We know that the Antichrist is going to step into that temple somewhere around the three and a half year mark of the tribulation, declare himself as God, declare to be worshipped at that point. These Jews are going to be deceived. But we know the two witnesses are also going to be preaching during this time in the first three and a half years when they're trying to get the Jewish people to the Lord to accept Jesus as the Messiah. Because so many of them right now do not. They're lost. But we need to go through some of this stuff first before we can get to that. It's the way the prophecy is going to work. Look, I mentioned earlier, look, you have nothing to worry about if you're walking with the Lord. And that's why we do these videos. We talk about the prophetic headlines. We talk about what's going on in the world because we're trying to get people to Jesus because time is running out. Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? If not, this is your opportunity. You know, maybe you, you click this video, you didn't think this blind guy is going to be talking about leading me to Jesus. But here we go. I know some people have probably clicked off the video by now. That's, that's fine. That's on them. But if you're still here and you haven't received Christ, this is how you do it. You start by acknowledging first that you're a sinner. We all are. But God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. So what's our part in this? Well, we have to repent of our sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry. You have to turn from a lifestyle, a habit, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you, he'll wipe that sin away. The Bible says you won't even remember it anymore. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you make to give your life to the Lord. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more for you guys on this down below. Let me know your thoughts. Curious to see what you guys think about it. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It's a great blessing if you can help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.